Good day and uh, welcome to this class. Uh, we are going to continue talking about geotechnical uh, reuse of waste, a topic which we started last time. Last time we looked at reuse of coal ash, reuse of tailings, reuse of tires, reuse of slag. And I hope that after the discussion, if a new material is offered to you, very often a person from the industry will come and say, sir, I have this white powder and I have a huge mound of it. Can you use it for X, Y or Z purpose? Mostly the industry guys will know whether it is hazardous or not. But the fact is that if a person from the industry says he has got a material which is not hazardous in his opinion, then you should be able to check its suitability for using in earthworks. The moment it is very fine, you have a problem because it is likely to be uh, silt or clay sized and normally plasticity will not be there in the fine particles. Why do we get plasticity in soils? Because of the net negative charge on the fine particles and the net negative charge on the fine particles come on account of the manner in which the clay particles have uh, been formed. In a process in the industry, these very fine particles may be mostly physical crushing or physical uh, breaking down of grains into a very fine powdery range. So there may be no net negative charge on the particles. So they may be like rock dust, which may be in the clay size range. But when you try and uh, classify a material which is in the clay size range, which, has non, which is non-plastic, how would you classify it in soil, soil mechanics term? I give you a material, I say 100 percent of this material is, what is the clay size range? Below? Below 2 microns. So, 100 percent of this material is below 2 microns, but it is non-plastic. How will you classify this soil? Will you call it sand? Will you call it silt? Will you call it clay? What will you call it? You will go to your A chart. Grain size distribution is done, 100 percent of the material is finer than 2 microns. And you will go to your chart and plasticity index is 0. So, how will you classify it? It is not clear of low plasticity because it is non-plastic. So, it is a non-plastic soil in clay size range. There is no word given for the soil which is there separately, but it is not clay because the moment you say it is clay, you imply it has plasticity and you imply it has a liquid limit and plastic limit. You can call it non-plastic clay sized material, that is fine. Actually, it is silt in the clay size range. Actually, it will behave like silt, but it is in the clay size range. Anyways, so when you get a new material, you have to perform all the tests, chemical, physical, uh, uh, environmental impact, so that before you start working with it, you are able to say that this material will not degrade with time, this material will not harm the environment with time, it is workable as a soil like material and it can be worked with the existing earth moving equipment. Today we are going to look at two new uh, issues. Municipal solid waste goes to a landfill and uh, what kind of uh, biodegradable content does municipal solid waste have? Anybody would like to recall from what we discussed in the beginning? It can be as high as what and as low as what? Biodegradable content in municipal solid waste. So, I may not be wrong if I might say that biodegradable content can be from 35 percent to 75 percent. It is the rare municipal solid waste which will have 100 percent biodegradables because something or the other must be mixed in it. And it is the rare municipal solid waste which will have less than 35 percent biodegradables because municipal solid waste is primarily the material which is coming out from the rejects from the households and the residential areas and the 
fruit and vegetable markets and commercial centers and everything. So, in a sense, 35 to 75 percent biodegradables is what the waste has. Now, if I bury it for 20 years, one would expect this waste to stabilize and the processes in landfill are anaerobic. So, anaerobic processes will decompose and degrade this waste. I am hoping that in 20 years it will have fully stabilized. Do you think it would have fully stabilized? And I am talking of it being in a waste dump which was open every year it rains and water would go through it. So, one would tend to think that old waste, the biodegradables would have decomposed. Whatever leachate had to come out would have come out, whatever gases had to come out would have come out and the non-biodegradable matrix is what which will remain. So, the question is can I use 20 year old waste as soil? That is the question. So, one would go to a landfill and pick up waste which is 20 years old and see what it comprises of. And just to remember other than those 35 to 75 percent biodegradables, what did we have? A good thumb rule always is that you have one third is biodegradable, one third is inerts, you know construction and demolition debris, uh, silt from the drains and dusting, sweeping dust that 30 and 33 percent are others plastics, cloth, wood, rubber, leather, whatever you want, want to say. This is a good thumb rule and in different countries different things will happen. In some countries a lot of paper will come because there is no kabadiwala system. In India there will be no paper because you are very efficient kabadiwala system. So, depending on the kind of uh, uh, recycling system you have, waste may have different co compositions. So, over a period of time, we would like to see whether aged municipal solid waste becomes stable. If it has not become fully stable, is it almost stable and can we use it? So, that is the objective. The other, uh, the other uh, aspect we are going to uh, discuss today is that there are several ways to energy plants which have come up across the world, more than 2000 to be precise. Now, they burn the waste. So, you burn coal, what do you get? What is this ash in the coal? How much ash do you get in coal in India? If I burn 100 units of coal, how much ash will come out? We have got poor quality coal, 30 to 40 percent ash is there. What is this ash? Is it I burnt the carbon and it became ash? Unlikely, C plus O2 is CO2. So, what is this ash in the coal? Soil, soil or rock. When the coal was formed, it was not formed by a pure industrial process that you will get pure coal. After all, all these trees and vegetation and everything which got compressed under time, the soil must have fallen in it also. So, the original coal has a ash content of 30, 35, 40 percent means it has soil, it has impurity and that impurity is soil. You burn it, what remains? Some of the ash which is formed from the coal, but what is this ash? This ash is actually the silica which is embedded in the coal. So, out comes ash. Now, if I burn waste, what will come out? Out will come ash. If I burn wood, what will come out? Out will come ash. Maybe in wood, the ash will be only 5 to 10 percent because in its silica will be in the matrix of the wood. It cannot have 30, 40 percent. Wood cannot have 30 percent soil inside it, it would not live. So, you burn municipal solid waste, out comes ash. How much ash will come in? Depends on how much soil you sent in. So, in some countries they will burn something called mass burn, they will burn the waste totally, high ash will come out because the entire waste was sent. In some countries they will say segregated, they will do some segregation and only sell the combustibles, low ash will come out. We will also look at that ash, can that be reused and what is happening in the world. These are really both cutting edge topics right at the front of developments in the last 5 to 7 years. So, we are going to address geotechnical reuse of aged municipal solid waste. So, the word that we are going to use is aged, which we get from landfills and incinerated municipal solid ash from 
WT plots. But just as an equivalence, please see the equivalence here. We are saying that maybe in 10 to 20 years, all the biodegradables have decomposed and that is what the waste to energy plant is doing in an hour, depending on the retention time inside. That what is it burning? It is burning the organics, na? it is not burning the soil. If it had paper, it will burn. If it had cloth, it will burn. If it had food waste, it will burn. If it had leaves, it will burn. And what is the landfill doing? Landfill is decomposing them over a period of 20 years by anaerobic processes. What will, what will be decomposed? The same stuff that will burn, except that plastics will burn in the incinerator. Plastics will not get degraded in the landfill. So let us look at aged municipal solid waste. The question is, is 20, 10 to 20 years old waste from MSW dump similar to soil? Can it be used for earthworks in embankments, filling low-lying areas and as backfill? So does aged municipal solid waste have significant non-inert material? We have said now, so it, the material that we should have should be physically and chemically stable. So is the organic content high? If it is high, we have a problem. The question is, what is high? Is 1% high? Is 10% high? Or is 50% high? Does it have bad smell? Does it give out colored water? Does it leach out colored water? And does it leach out heavy metals? Or any other deleterious materials like sulfates, chlorides, and other salts? So the methodology is we look at the literature look at the case studies of use of aged municipal solid waste and also look at the uh, data emerging from India. This I have already said, the objective is to see whether bulk geotechnical applications of aged municipal solid waste in embankments and filling of low lying areas is feasible. If you look at the literature, and I am talking about some data from California, some from Korea, and three from India. And typically, the age of the waste, 60 years, 25 years, 4 to 12 years, 15 years, 15 years. Bulk of it, the waste is soil sized. Please understand. So if I say, if I come from this side, passing 2 mm sieve, about 40 percent. Passing 2 mm sieve, about 60 to 70 percent. Passing 8 mm sieve, 60 to 70 percent. So gravel downwards or coarse sand downwards, 60 percent of the material not reported. Passing 75 micron sieve is about 30 percent. So it means the others are more. Here some liquid limit and plastic limit has been reported by California, but not reported in the others. Maximum dry density. good high range, indicating more soil-like behavior, a little lower range. OMC, wide variations. So the question is how much non, how much biodegradable content? 60 years, 6 to 12, 6 to 12, 14, 9 to 20, 9 to 16. So what was 35 to 75 has come to about 10 percent. That's all I can say. Maybe 15, sometimes as low as 5 percent. So what is low? What is high? That's the only question. Which is your acceptance line? Currently, the acceptance line of defining organic soils is 3 percent, maybe extendable to 5 percent. If we do a lot of research, maybe this is even more extendable to 7 to 10 percent. But we have to be cautious when we do that because there are materials which are having more organic content. Their compressibility is low, but you can see phi dash, the only one which has been reported from Seol is from 12 to 35 degrees. You can be sure that 35 degrees is when the organic content is low and 12 is when the organic content is high. So organic content does play a role in reducing your angle of shearing resistance. So we will see how this material has been used as we go forward. but. In this study from Southern California, they said, because you see, how do you bring this down to the acceptable level of 5 percent? Well, at California, they said, if you want to use it, you will blend it with soil. It's like, you know, dilution. You mix soil with 6 percent organic content to 100 grams and take another 100 grams of soil with zero organic content, mix the two, and the organic content will fall to 3 percent, and you can say, I can use this soil. So that's what they suggested. 
And uh, they were very clear that if you are having organic content more than 8 percent, the soil behaves very badly. And of course, this is other materials. So, some of the work done by uh, some of our students here including Mohit and Garima uh, uh, is basically what is happening in India. So, they have taken uh, Mohit's work mainly they have taken material from Kadapa landfill which is in Andhra Pradesh, uh, waste as old as 40 to 50 years. Uh, I mean that is the oldest waste. It worked from 1970 to 2014 from Hyderabad landfill started in 2001, so 15 to 17 years. Do remember 15 to 17 years will be at the dead center. Getting to that waste and taking it out is not that simple. Yeah? The landfill keeps on going like that. So, what is the oldest waste is in the center. And then there is a Delhi landfill which is uh, started in 94 and age is about 10, 10 to 22 years. So, here is the kind of activity which one does. This is the at Kadapa is a good site because that is a World Bank headed project where they are doing landfill mining. So, if, if you set up a landfill mining, uh, because they had dug up everything and mined it, you were not sure exactly what is the age of the waste because everything is now mixed. But in Hyderabad and in uh, Delhi, one could get samples 8 to 10 years old and 10 to 20 years old. So, here is the Kadapa operation, the, the material excavator is as excavating it from the landfill. You use a, a trommel, a trommel is nothing but a round screens with holes in it and they rotate. So, a trommel is a rotating screen, cylindrical rotating screen. What is the advantage? The soil keeps on dropping as it, some of the soil will pass through and other will go up and drop. As it drops, it breaks itself and passes through. So, these are not like a grain size situation. So, here is a conveyor belt which takes the material up and here is the vibe screen through which the material passes through. So, that this excavator will put the material in this pit and this is the conveyor belt which is coming out of the pit and as it goes up these people are removing the large size material and you see and this is the large size material which is collected. They do not allow it to go to the screen, it will damage the screen, but this is the kind of material which comes out. Once it goes up the screen, these are the rotating screens. Okay. So, this is the material that will fall out. This looks like soil, right. So, some will fall out here, some will fall out here and some will come out completely and what comes out completely is the oversized fraction. So, here you can see the oversized fraction falling here. So, this is falling from here, this is the oversized fraction, this is the soil, this is soil like, this is more um, sand gravel like and this is the oversized fraction plastics and cloth and so on and so forth. So, that is the soil like material, that is the oversized fraction and that is the landfill mining operation. Okay? But at the same site which is now closed since 2004, 2014, 2004, 2014 you will still get dark colored liquid out, it is not operational, there is no fresh waste coming out, this is leachate, this is leachate. So, that is an indication that some colored liquid is still coming out. It does not come out by itself, when it rains it seeps through and comes out at the bottom. So, this is what was done at Hyderabad. Uh, here you can see a young man, we are all familiar with, digging out the old waste. This is what it looks like and taking leachate samples and coming into the trommel. This is the, this is the excavator bringing it, dumping it. That is the type of soil. In one location you get you get dark, in another case fresh brown soil. So, now which has got more organic content? The light colored soil or the darker soil? And darker soil. Good. And this is at Delhi landfill, excavator being used, you can see this dark material, this is another material. And here there were no trommels, so these sieves have been made specially, soil is put on it and this is something and this is something. And uh, Mohit was able to retract the dates from the newspaper cuttings which are still there and he could prove it that this was man in 98. So, that is almost 20 years ago. So, he could. Anyway, so when you look at the material in terms of its compositional individual components, most of the material is soil size range. This is the oversized range. This is the big large construction and when you say inert you mean the large size material. But you have plastics here in Kadapa, you have plastics, 
and you have plastics and there are others, a little bit of textiles, you know, cloth rags, leather, wood, all these are burnable. These are energy recovery materials, please remember. When I do grain size distribution, I am interested in how much is soil like material. Soil like means gravel, sand, silt, clay. So, sand range is less than 4.75 mm and gravel is 4.75 to 20 probably fine gravel, but there is also coarse gravel. So, in any ways, here is the material which is less than 4, 20 percent, 20 percent, 16 percent. Here is the material which is 8 to 4. If you go up to 30, then it is 33 plus 12 plus 22, so about 60 percent material is soil like. Okay? So, this is from Kadapa, 60 percent material is soil like. Uh, from Delhi also, uh, if I go 35 down, 14, 35 to 16, 16 to 4, 4 to 0, 14 plus 20, 34 plus 33, 67, 10, 30, 70. So, 60 to 70 percent material is in the soil sized range. Then let us look at organic content because that is something which is important to us. So, from 20 year old Delhi landfill, 12 years old Delhi landfill, we are having uh, 6 to 10 percent. But this is only the very fine range, please see, the wood, wood fragments and the other will not go. The moment you go to a higher range, it goes up. Okay? Hyderabad landfill, 11 to 12 in the very fine range, but if you go to the higher range, 20 percent. Kandapa landfill, 6 to 7 to 7. But if I take Yamuna sand, 0.6, if I take Delhi silt, 1, they are less than 3 percent and these are all above 3 percent and still the full has to be done because this matrix has only been done in this side when you fill these up, maybe the values will go up because this is only 20 percent of the material. If you are only going to take a 20 percent of the material, you are not going to be able to use much of the material. But when you mix water with them, because you saw black leachate at the side, you said let us mix water with the soil, so we get these uh, kind of suspensions and when you decant it through filter paper, this is silt. This is Delhi, this is Kadapa, this is Hyderabad. So, there is some color which is coming out. And the other thing is the leachate that you analyze, they do not have very high heavy metals, maybe a one or two are exceeding the limits, but there are a lot of total dissolved salts. So, we just mixed up 1 is to 3 dilution or 1 is to 4 dilution, this is just initial works, and we are getting very high values of total dissolved. Please see Delhi silt is 100 to 200, in drinking water 600 is acceptable, desirable but here these are all in thousands, so that is a problem. And does it smell bad? When you excavate, it smells very bad, but within a month, there is very little order. After aeration for a month, you can, it is like soil, you feel it is like soil. High order when you excavate it. And if you look at the permittable organic contents in the various uh, literature, this is about up to 5 percent is allowed. Maybe sometimes 7 percent is also mentioned, but 5 percent is allowed. Then you look at case studies that all these landfill mining projects, how much of the soil has been used as an earth fill and this is all these landfills abroad. And you are using about 60 to 70 percent soil. But all of them are reusing it at the landfill as intermediate cover, daily cover, intermediate cover, daily cover, cover, cover. Nobody is using it as an earth fill, except one place it is written, but the details are not mentioned. So, even today, because of the organic content and associated salts, there is a slight thinking that it cannot be used. But one thing is clear, maybe it requires some pretreatment. And if I can find a cost effective way of pretreatment, then I can use it in the earthworks. If you look at the heavy metal concentrations uh, reported in literature uh, with respect to uh, aged municipal solid waste, and if we compare these concentrations with respect to some uh, standard levels uh, reported from the Canadian standards, the Dutch standards, and also the continental crust, uh, we find that in some of the aged waste, uh, the heavy metals are higher or elevated. For example, if you look at chromium, 
then the screening level as per Canadian standards is 64 and the continental crust value is 25, but we are seeing that at least in three landfills, the chromium values are more than these values. Similarly, copper, lead and cadmium have also been reported to be higher than the uh, acceptable values or at least elevated in comparison to the uh, soil. We look at metal concentrations in aged municipal solid waste from Indian landfills and uh, here also we are using the Canadian standards and the Dutch standards along with the continental crust values. And if you look at this table uh, where we have uh, determined all these heavy metals, we find that in bulk of the landfills the chromium is high. In some of the landfills copper is at an elevated level and in one of the landfills uh, cadmium is at an elevated level. It is interesting to see that the Okla landfill at Delhi, uh, what are the heavy metal concentrations in comparison to the local soil adjacent to the Okla landfill. And if I compare, uh, you will see cadmium is similar, but nickel is higher, lead is higher, uh, copper is higher, uh, chromium is 10 times higher, zinc is elevated, manganese is elevated and so is iron. So, the issue is that in aged municipal solid waste, uh, sometimes the heavy metals can be higher. Uh, this is another interesting comparison. Uh, we, we are looking at the heavy metals at Okla, Hyderabad and Kadapa and we are compa comparing this with the compost standards. That means, can the waste that we have uh, taken out from these landfills, how do the heavy metals compare with the compost standards as per Indian MSW rules and we find that if you look at uh, cadmium, it is higher in Hyderabad in Kadapa. If you look at uh, chromium, the acceptable value is 50 but in all the three uh, age waste it is higher and so is copper in two of the landfills. So, in this way what we see is that uh, in some landfills the heavy metals may be within limits, but in other landfills heavy metals may be at an elevated level. So, use of aged municipal solid waste has been basically as cover and intermediate cover in most cases and in as earthworks it is not been widely reported. Um, the issues about organic content because age waste is reported to have 6 to 20 percent. In some of the studies, uh, heavy metals have been reported within limits of often they will say they are higher, but issues about color and total dissolved solids have still to be resolved. But I do expect over the next 5 years that technologies will now be there where we can start reusing it we do some aeration, we, we do some burning, we do some pretreatment to make it uh, workable. Any thoughts on your mind before we go forward? Because the next one is incinerated ash. So, as far as aged municipal solid waste is concerned. One thing that does come out is it degrades very rapidly. In 10 years, that 35, 40 percent is down to 10, 12 percent. And whether that limit of 5 can be taken to 10 is the jury is still out. But remember that if you want to uh, use more and more of the waste, you have to take the higher fractions. So, the, as you go to coarser fractions, the organic content seems to be going up. So, if you want to use 70 percent, then you have to use 30 mm down. And the test for doing uh, organic content is a muffle furnace test where the crucible in which you put the sample is very small. So, if you want to take a lot of soil, then you have to have a big muffle furnace which is required for a representative uh, organic content. Any questions? Okay. Then let us look at some data on waste to energy ash. So, one of the thoughts which one has is that if you take the waste and burn it, it will vanish. So, let me remind you nothing vanishes. If you do mass burning in India and abroad, a lot of mass burn incinerators are there. That means, they put everything in it, including the soil mixed, a little bit of pre segregation, but you mass burn the whole thing. 30 percent to 35 percent of the material is still going to come out as ash, because that is the amount of soil and inerts which were there originally. 
So, nothing vanishes. Volume reduction is 90 percent because plastics and paper and cloth will burn and wood will burn. So, volume reduction is 90 percent, but weight reduction is only 70 percent. So, we have uh, three waste energy plants in, in Delhi, but one is the one has been working for the last three to four years. Other two have just started this year, so we will not look at the data from there. We have looked at the waste reaching the landfill from this one plant and we also looked at data. Uh, Garima has done this uh, literature as to what data regarding this ash. So, th there are more than 2000 waste to energy plants which are burning three, 300 million tons of municipal solid waste every year and they produce 60 to 90 million tons of ash and this ash has also to be used or it will go into landfills. In India, five plants are now operational or they have just started. Under the Swachh Bharat mission, 48 more are likely to come up in the near future. And that's a huge number of waste to energy plants. But I do expect in all the major cities, in the 1 million plus cities, which is what 53 cities are all about, uh, because we have no land and the next city or the next village will not allow you to dump the waste near their, in their, near their backyard, we are going to have to use these waste to energy plants. Volume reduction is 90 percent, weight reduction is 70 to 80 percent. Do you remember in coal fired boilers how much was bottom ash and how much was flash? In our coal, uh, coal fired thermal power plants when you did the, does anybody remember how what percentage of the ash which comes out in coal plants is flash and what is bottom ash? Well, it was 20 percent bottom ash and 80 percent fly ash. So, 80 percent of the ash is fly ash. Here it is opposite, 80 to 90 percent of the ash is bottom ash and 10 to 20 percent is fly ash. Okay? So, that is a big difference number one. So, when you look at literature, bottom ash is sand to gravel sized, very good can be of great use to us. Fly ash is basically sandy silt, silty sand. So, it is a much finer material. Both are non-plastic and their angle of shearing resistance is in the same range as soils, 30, 35, 40, 45 sands and gravels. But the problem is fly ash has leachable heavy metals. That is clear, that is a clear message coming out. In coal ash, it is still not 100 percent clear that all fly ashes have leachable heavy metals, though America is now saying that from the ash pond some unusual uh, heavy metals are leaching out. But here uh, in MSW ash in the fly ash, which is a low, low percentage, that means the metals get volatilized in the furnace they go with the flue gases and when the flue gases are caught with the ash, they deposit themselves on the fly ash. Bottom ash can be used in geotechnical applications, but sometimes has leachable salts and therefore, you may need some treatment or dosing of the bottom ash for earthworks. But the bulk of the cases, bottom ash is reusable with some nominal pretreatment. Now, the ash quality depends on the type of waste, how much inerts you are sending in, the type of incinerator, what is the process, what is the operating temperature, you are expected to be above 800 to 900 degrees centigrade and all these, so that dioxins are not created and what are the types of additives that have been used in the processes of burning. So, if you look at what is happening in Delhi, uh, ash is coming in the form of uh, in trucks. Uh, we are not sure whether it is mixed or unmixed, but no separate truck comes for fly ash and bottom ash. So, maybe it is mixed, maybe uh, eight, eight trucks will be of bottom ash and two will be of fly ash. The ash does not look like coal ash, it is dark, it is not like the light grey fly ash that you saw and you can see large size particles because it is a mass burn of plant. 
and when you stockpile it, this one truck load, you can see some of the large size stones. Uh, you could sample it using a loader and this is the material which has reached the sieving station and this is after drying and now you can use the sieves of different sizes. Uh, so sieving operations going on. So, that is less than 4 mm, looks like soil sandy material, comfortable, grayish, Yamuna sand like. That is 4 to 16 mm, but you see some non soil like material. So, everything does not seem to have burnt, right? We would expect at 900 this would have burned, but anyway still it is gravelly material what we expected. That is 16 to 35, so mostly gravelly material, CND waste, aggregate, some ceramics, some glass. So, this should have burnt and that is 35 to 80, cloth you can see lot of cloth okay? and of course, large size material. And not to miss this, greater than 80 mm, 80 mm 8 centimeters, 3 inches, the size of your triaxial sample, that is the sieve size, a lot of cloth and plastics, but some bricks and other materials as well. So, if you look at the grain size distribution, 90 percent in the gravel to sand silt size range, 93 percent. 92 percent, 86 percent. If you look at the compositional analysis of uh, the incinerator bottom ash from two waste energy plants in Delhi, we see that the soil like material is 90 percent of the total and the other minor components are metal, glass, ceramics, some unburnt organics and CND waste. If you uh, look at the data reported in literature on loss of ignition, uh, in the muffle furnace, then in the incinerated ash, the LOI can be as low as 2 percent, but it can be as high as 15 percent. That means, all the organics are not completely burnt in the incineration process. Some values are now coming in from the two waste to energy plants in Delhi and what we observe is that the LOI can be as low as 0.9 percent, but can be as high as 8.1 percent. This also seems to be dependent on uh, the weather conditions in the during the cold months, the winter months like in February, uh, burning of the organics may not be as efficient, whereas in the in the summer months, uh, say June, the burning of the organics may be more efficient. In comparison to the local soil of Delhi, which is Yamuna sand, you, you find that Yamuna sand has much lower loss on ignition and organic content. And similarly, in the ash, uh, which is coming from a, a, a local thermal power station in Delhi, the organic content of the loss on ignition at this site was much lower. The other issue reg regarding uh, uh, incinerated ash is the presence of heavy metals and soluble salts. So, if you look at uh, data emanating from different countries, uh, fly ash has uh, more abundance of heavy metals and lead, zinc, cadmium, uh, chromium uh, has been uh, have been the metals of concern. Whereas, in bottom ash, it is more the salts. So, there has been a reporting of a, a high amount of chlorides and sulphates in many bottom ash samples and heavy metals have not always reported have not always been reported to be of very high values, but we do see copper coming up again and again. If we look at the uh, total dissolved solids data just emanating from the uh, bottom ash of uh, the two waste energy plants in Delhi, we find that the values are extremely high in comparison to the local uh, Yamuna sand and of the local uh, bottom ash of a coal fired thermal power station. If one looks at case studies for reutilization of uh, 
incinerated bottom ash, we find that often it has been used for production of secondary aggregates or as part of the base course in road construction. Two examples of embankment construction uh, uh, in Netherlands uh, reported uh, in the 80s uh, talk about large utilization of bottom ash, but it is important to note that wherever bottom ash was used, a compacted clay liner was put over it and also a sand drainage layer in an attempt to keep the water out of the uh, bottom ash which had been placed in the embankment and groundwater quality was measured uh, intensively on both sides of the embankment. And so is the case in the second example where a sand bentonite mixture was used on top to minimize the infiltration of the rainwater reaching the bottom ash. In the other examples, uh, uh, bottom ash has been used within the landfill for construction of uh, access roads and also as a 30 percent substitute in uh, aggregate for uh, the asphalt access road in the US. So, these are some examples of uh, uh, how uh, MSW bottom ash after incineration has been used in uh, different uh, applications in roads and embankments. Well, that is all the testing that has been done so far. Data emanating from uh, the world is that bottom ash in many cases can be utilized in geotechnical uh, applications. So, this is a front running area because you have 30 percent of the material which has to be taken care of. Landfills may become one third their size, but they are not going to vanish. If you can take all this one third material which is coming out in ash and put it in building blocks, put it in the building materials, put it in the roads, the inert matrix of life, if everything is burnt off and put it in earthworks, then you can vanish the landfill and the landfill will vanish. Is that right? But you can't hide it. If it has got heavy metals, you have to report it. If you, you can't just say, okay, okay, I'll take a little, little bit and you know, I will spread it over all, uh, all over the area and I'll make the landfill vanish. So, that is the uh, uh, information about geotechnical reuse of incinerated ash and aged municipal solid waste. So, I hope one of you will be working in this area in the future to solve the countries so that all the lovely mountains that we have of waste disappear in the future. So, I will be happy to answer any questions if you have uh, something which bothers you or something, some thought, some alternate thought as to what we should do with all this. But quite clearly, once you do the sieving and the fractionation, it is clear that the soil like fraction is towards the finer size and the larger size material you can actually pick out, pick out the boulders, it can be treated like construction and demolition waste and the balance of it can go into producing energy. That means, all these cloths and plastics and paper can be re-sent back. But for that you have to do all this uh, sieving again and that is something which costs, costs money. And Yeah, so this issue about uh, sieving is an equivalent size, remember. So, if you have a laminated, uh, if you have a laminar element that is a plane like element, then you can always say that the smaller dimension can pass through, but the longer dimension may not, but it is like an equivalent overall thing. So, uh, the thing is once you have sieved it, then you can only do compositional analysis which is visual. I mean you have sieved it, you got the big particles, now keep the cloth weight separately keep the stone weight separately and keep the plastics and weight separately and do remember that cloth and plastics look like too much, but their weight is very little. So, in that large sized material that you are going to have, bulk of it will be the weight of the brick bats and the stones and very little weight is going to be there of the plastics and the cloth, 1 percent or 2 percent only of the entire material. So, compositional analysis has to be done. and. I am saying if this material goes into the geotechnical application, then over a period of time it is going to degrade. So, we have to be very careful what is the organic content of the finer fraction where visually you cannot. You know, see, once you have sand sized material, you can look at the sand grains, but you cannot visually look at the pore size of the sand and say, no, no, this has got 
fiber, this has got wood pieces. So, that will come out from the organic content. Any other thought which comes to your mind? But as earth becomes more and more expensive, remember local soil used to be 50 rupees per cubic meter several, several years ago. Then it became 150. Then it has become 500 now. So as local soil becomes 500 rupees per cubic meter or even more, the economics of reusing these materials after sieving, what, what it says is if you've got ash, the cost of sieving, sending in a truck, fractionating, putting it in a truck, bringing it to site must be cheaper than the cost of digging up soil from nearby area. So as these two will come on par uh, sooner or later. Uh, all you have to do is underwrite, it will not pollute the soil and the environment around it. It should not smell bad, there should be no colored water coming out of it. We haven't done the colored water test on this, we could, we could also check that out and uh, there should be no salts which should be uh, coming out in a big way. So we will stop here, have a good day.